Last week, we talked about a new tracking method rolling out for public testing in the V63 PTC called multimodal tracking, where your hands and controllers can be tracked independently of each other. But this week, we will dive into a new tracking method available now for developers in the V62 SDK. And you can try it today. Wide motion tracking will have a serious impact on most games you play, especially games like Gorilla Tag and fighting games. But that's not everything. From new neural controllers, portals like in Ready Player One, to the PlayStation VR becoming a PC VR headset. This week's a big one, so strap in for this week's worth of VR news. First, let's talk about Portal. For years, Meta have been trying to integrate Horizon Worlds into the main Quest OS, and Horizon Worlds has been steadily improving over the years, but what seems like their latest attempt is to integrate portals into our home environments. The latest V62 update includes an option to have portals to make it easier to travel into Horizon Worlds. Long before VR, I always pictured what a UI system for VR would look like, and my first thought would have been portals to other games and experiences, much like in Ready Player One. So it seems this is a step closer to reality. I checked the setting to see if I could enable this myself, but it seems it's only visible to some. But I did lead me to check out Horizon Worlds, and it is coming a long way, with more complex and refined experiences, but it's clear we need more experiences like Super Rumble to get users interested in Horizon Worlds, because at the moment, it's still an incredibly quiet metaverse. Next, let's talk about a device that will track your individual finger movements to such accuracy that you could say it's negative latency, which sounds impossible, but it's not. You might remember these neural wrist controllers shown a few years ago. Well, according to Zuck on the Daily Brew podcast, they're only a few years away from shipping a neural device like this. This would have wide potential for almost limitless tracking. No need for cameras or specific conditions to track any movement, as the wristbands would track the neural activity relating to that movement, possibly even before your fingers move, hence the negative latency. Haptic feedback could also be included to give you a sense of touch, as you wouldn't be physically gripping a controller like the ones we have now. And it does make me wonder if careful electric stimulation could actually restrict finger movement so it feels like you're actually holding an object. But I'd make more of an assumption this would be for AR glasses, as they plan to show us a demo later this year. To free up the tracking of the hands via cameras would free up processing power needed for AR glasses. And with the form factor they are aiming for, they will need all the compute they can get. But keeping on the theme of tracking, shown on X recently was a comparison of both the Vision Pro hand tracking and the Quest 3 tracking accuracy. The Quest 3's hand tracking was clearly superior tracking. The motion and managing of hand occlusion was much better than that of the Vision Pro. Which to be honest, shouldn't be a surprise as Meta has had time on its hands in terms of user data and updates. But it's the minor improvements that the Quest is making each month that keep making the Quest better and better. And the most recent update brought with it a tracking method you'll start to see in a few games if the developers choose to use them. Wide motion tracking is something we have seen before. A few months ago, Meta has shown us something called inside out body tracking, where the camera positions of the Quest 3 specifically can not just track your hands, but your entire upper body. And now this is available for developers on the V62 SDK. You can give this a try today with the Dodge Arcade game in App Lab, and it's surprising how accurate this is. Shooting games, fighting games, and even Gorilla Tag could see a huge benefit to this type of system, and this would be perfect for nearly all VR games. This, however, won't be compatible with the multimodal tracking we talked about last week, where your controllers and hands are tracked independently. And my guess is one is suited for VR, while the other is more AR related. But now let's move on to something I have really high hopes for, and that's the Quest Pro 2. I think we can all agree the first Quest Pro was a near failure from a consumer standpoint. It was a fairly decent headset, but the immediate price cuts and the fact the Quest 3 was just better really left a bad taste in my mouth when it came to this headset. The Quest Pro 2, however, could actually be something worth hyping about. And that's for two specific reasons, the Vision Pro and LG. The Vision Pro because it gives viability to Meta to make a high resolution entertainment device that isn't purely made for work or advertised for work. And LG because there are recent reports that suggest the Quest Pro 2 could be manufactured by LG. And what this could essentially boil down to is more bang for your buck. The Quest Pro was expensive 
and this was because it was a product with new technology. Manufacturing lines had to be made to create a cheaper headset in the form of the Quest 3. Next time around, however, this should be completely different. And I believe this is partly the reason for potentially using LG to help manufacturing elements or all of the Quest Pro 2. There would also be a WebOS integration which would allow for access for all of LG's smart TV functions, so essentially act as a normal TV. Reports show from insiders that this headset will be released the first half of 2025 at an eye-watering cost of $2,000. But a VR headset that is also a high-resolution TV doesn't sound that bad if it has the resolution of a TV. The price is obviously high, but still substantially cheaper than the Vision Pro. And in my opinion, at that price, it needs to be a headset with no compromises. I want eye tracking, near perfect pass through with super high resolution displays, high field of view and technology shown in the Douglas Landman talk he gave a few months ago. I'll leave that overview I did in the description. But what do you think about that price and the idea of a Quest Pro 2? Let me know down in the comment section below. Before we talk about Bone Lab, I just want to touch on something that perhaps has a deeper meaning. As you probably already know by now, the PSVR 2 could be getting PC VR support later this year, as per their own blog post, which would open up an entire new market for the headset. The PSVR 2 is a more expensive headset than that of the Quest, but for those looking for eye tracking, haptic controllers, and that OLED panel, it might be a better option for PC VR. But of course, that is if it's an open device. And that brings me onto something Zuck said in his most recent talk about the Vision Pro. According to Zuck, one of the main differences between the Vision Pro and the Quest is the fact in his eyes, the Quest is an open device. And I do partly agree because of things like SideQuest, but it does highlight the future of what VR could look like. Obviously, at the moment, we are all focused on what's next. And once we get to the point where the headsets are good enough, then we can focus on the software. In Ready Player One, it wasn't the headsets that had the value, it was the Oasis. And it will be interesting to see how Apple and Meta, or even PlayStation, start to market and push their own software. And now that LG could be manufacturing the next generation of Quests, maybe that gives Meta the space to really start working on its operating system and the Metaverse. Lastly, let's talk about a few games. According to the anniversary update Brandon posted last year, we were supposed to get this huge overhaul to Bone Lab that would try to closer match the expectations everyone had for the game. Communication has definitely not been their strong suit, but we finally have another update to go off, and I'll play the video in the background now. By the looks of it, a more carefully integrated modern system via Mod.io will be available within the next update, along with a more polished and optimised SDK. Looking back on it, the team were definitely rushed into a launch as they clearly weren't happy with the SDK, which is strange considering that's what made Boneworks such a standout game. Team Beef, the modders behind Quake, Half-Life and the Doom ports are working on what looks to be a standalone port for the original Tomb Raider, and this is what it looks like. It's incredible what this team is able to do, and I know some of you prefer new games over classic VR remakes, but I personally love to play these games in a new way. And lastly, if you want to feel like Spider-Man and John Wick, Swarm 2 is coming out in the next few weeks, and if you have haven't played the first swarm, it's one of the best and smoothest web swinging games you can play. If you liked today's video, like and subscribe, and follow me on X for some earlier sneak peeks. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.